Where are we? Verse 3. For what I received, said Paul, I passed on to you as of first importance. That Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Peter, and then to the twelve. After that he appeared to more than 500 of the brethren at the same time, most of whom are still living. Though some have passed away, that should really be. I, I, I don't know why they insist on translating the Greek literally there. To fall asleep in Greek means to pass away, okay? Not when you go to bed at night, but in this sense it means to pass away, okay? Then he appeared to James, then to the apostles, and last of all he appeared to me also as to one abnormally born. So there you've got it. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. Amen. And the Bible says Paul is, is quite uh, plain and, and simple about this. Um, if you want to know about the resurrection, the physical resurrection of Jesus Christ, you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And may I say it is a physical resurrection. There are people around in some kind of churches that say, well, Jesus was raised, but actually he didn't raise physically, he didn't come out of that tomb, he came out of some kind of a spirit. And that is actually a heresy because it takes away the whole hope of the life transforming gospel of Jesus Christ. When Jesus was raised on Sunday, Easter Sunday morning 2,000 years ago, he was raised physically from the grave. He came walking out of that grave in a spiritual, physical body. Amen. That's what the scriptures teach. And uh, Paul says here that this really is the most important thing. And he boils the gospel down to three very simple points. You know, he doesn't beat around the bush. He doesn't give people things that are too hard for them to understand. He says the things that you really need to get hold of, there are three things. Jesus died on a cross. Jesus was buried in the ground. And Jesus rose again on the third day physically, and he came out of that grave, okay? Those three things are what he, Paul says are of the first importance. Those are the things which define the gospel of Jesus Christ. And this is where Christianity differs from any other religious faith in the entire globe. Islam, Buddhism, Hinduism, you name it, all of the isms and the religions in the world, none of them, absolutely none of them, have somebody, their saviour, or their prophet, their leader, who was raised from the dead. Muhammad is buried in Mecca. Buddha is married somewhere in, in, in India. Is it somewhere in northern India? You go around them all. But in Christianity, you have an empty grave. That is, the, that, is the, the, that is the glory and that is the, the uh, what am I trying to say, that is the most important thing, that is the life transforming thing, still the word isn't coming to me. It's an empty grave, there's nothing in it, the grave has no more power, death has no more power and it's the greatest message of hope that human beings could ever have, amen. He's alive today, Buddha isn't, Mohammed isn't. None of them are, but Jesus Christ is. Amen? And that's what makes the difference. You can talk to people about religion until you're blue in the face, and until you're, you know, you can talk about anything, and you can maybe agree about a lot of things. But one thing that makes the difference, the thing that makes the difference, is that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead, and He is Lord today. Amen? So when you have received Jesus Christ into your life, you haven't just adopted a religious belief, you have accepted a living, risen person who is alive today into your life, and He comes into your life with His own resurrection power. Amen? And that's why He can change your life. So that's why we've all got testimony. Amen? He's alive. And it can make the difference. 
And he can change your life radically inside out. Amen. And it doesn't no matter where you are. It doesn't matter what you've been doing with your life. It doesn't matter how much of a mess you've made. When Jesus comes into your life with his resurrection power, he'll take you out of all of that stuff and give you a new life. Amen. The Christian life is not a religious life. It's not a life of just going to a church on Sunday. It's coming into a new life which is characterized and grounded in the very power of God in your daily life. Amen? Can I say that again? The Christian life, the real Christian life, is where Jesus comes into your life. You invite him into your life because you realize he died for you and he rose again for you. So you invite him into your life and he comes into your life as a living person. And he comes in with his resurrection power. So that resurrection power of his begins to transform you from the inside out. Can I hear an amen? amen. God doesn't want religious people. God does not need religious people. And by golly, the world doesn't need any more religion. The world has had religion for millennia. All around the globe of all kinds of different kinds. Amen. That's not what the world needs. And in fact, if you study history and you know history well enough, you'll know that all of the damage that religion has done, official institutional religion, has caused nothing but damage all around the world. Amen? Because people fight over religious beliefs. And we have the truth, and you don't have the truth. Jesus cuts all of that aside. Amen? The true Christian is someone who has experienced a life transforming the life transforming power of Jesus Christ in their life. Amen. Can I hear an amen? amen. Go on, give Jesus a hand clap. Amen. <laughs> Okay, but you still need the life transforming power of God in your life too, amen. Because if you look long enough inside or if you look long enough in your life, you know you need Him, amen. And that's what Paul is trying to get here. And he appeals to the fact that Jesus, after His resurrection, He appeared to so many people. So He appeared to Peter, He appeared to the women, He appeared to the twelve. He appeared in one meeting where there were more than 500 brothers at the same time, as well as sisters and children. So it must have been more than 500 people. Amen. Then he appeared to James. Then he appeared to the other 12 apostles. And last of all, he appeared to me as well. I've seen him. Okay? So I'm not talking about something that somebody else talked about. I'm not passing on somebody else's experience. Say, well, this person saw him. This person experienced his power, and that's what they told me, so I'm telling you that. No, Paul's saying, yeah, they all experienced, but I experienced it too. I've got him in my life as well. He appeared to me on the road to Damascus. Amen? There came a time in my life when I was 21 years old. And I was already pretty fed up with the life that I'd lived and the way my life was going, even though I was only 21. And I hadn't messed up big time like some people do, but I also, but I knew that my life, my heart was empty. That's my, that's my testimony, right? I didn't do drugs, I didn't become an alcoholic, but my own heart was empty. I had the best degree I could possibly get. But big deal, it didn't satisfy my heart. I got a good job, but that didn't satisfy my heart either. Something was missing inside. We call it the God void, the God space inside, the bit that God made for himself, and only he can come in and satisfy that part of your life. Amen? 
So, 1st of November, 1981, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, after going to church in the morning, I knelt down by my bed in the privacy of my own bedroom, and I shut that door so nobody could see me. And I got down on my knees and I asked Jesus to come into my life and make a difference. And from that time on, my life changed. And when I got filled with the Holy Spirit four months later, that's when my life really did take off and become radical. Amen. Within a year I was in Bible school, within six years I was on the mission field and I've been working for God ever since. Amen. Amen. Just like Paul. Amen. Amen. Now where am I going with this? Amen. Where am I going with this? See, over the page in 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 14, what's it say? If Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless and so is your faith. Our preaching is useless. And so is your faith. So if Jesus isn't alive, frankly, I'm wasting my time here. Yeah? We haven't got a message to preach. And we don't preach that Jesus rose from the dead just because we're religious. We preach that Jesus is alive because he's alive. Amen. It's real. Amen? But if he's not raised from the dead, we're wasting our time. You might as well shut up, all go home, shut the church door, demolish the building, do away with the Bible. None of it has any meaning and none of it has any power. Yeah? See, the power of God is in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Tell somebody, it's in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's where the life transforming power of God is, amen? Our preaching is useless, and so is your faith. Yeah? Big deal that you believe whatever you want to believe. It's useless. Useless. It won't change you. It won't really help you in the life in your life. What you need is a living savior. Someone that you can pray to. Someone that you can talk to every day of your life. Someone that when you're in need, or you know, whatever the need may be, when you have circumstances that you're finding difficult, when life gets tough for you, whatever it may be, you need somebody to pray to. You need somebody to talk to that you know is going to hear what you pray. See, when you pray, you don't just pray and your prayers go as far as the ceiling. You don't pray just to be religious. You pray because you're talking to somebody. You're talking to somebody that you know. You're talking to somebody that you've asked to come into your life. And he's real. And when you pray, he hears and he'll answer. Amen. Amen. God bless you with good health. God raise you up again. Because we're praying for you and God will do it. Amen. He brings his life transforming power into your physical body. He can do that. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't have a useless faith. We'll preach it because it's true, amen? And where are we now? Verse 15. More than that, we're there to be found to be false witnesses about God because we've testified, testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead. So we're liars. We're a bunch of liars. And we're a bunch of deceivers, yeah? Not about the cross. The cross is a historical fact. Everybody, anywhere, agrees that Jesus Christ was crucified, yeah? Yeah? And the proof of that is the fact that the Jews themselves accept the fact that, they, that he was crucified. Yeah? They didn't crucify because the Romans had crucified him. That's where the decision had to come from Pilate because the Jews couldn't crucify anybody. Even though that's what they wanted, they couldn't do it. They needed Pilate's affirmation and he gave, the, he gave them their permission. Yeah? But the Jews of all people are the people that you would expect to deny it because they've suffered so much because of it. But they don't, they will tell you, he, you know, he, he died, it's real, it's historical, it's a fact, he died on the cross outside Jerusalem, whenever it was, in, in AD 30, 33, amen, on Passover. But we preach that Jesus rose from the dead, that's what makes a difference, amen. But if I tell you that Jesus rose from the dead and he's not, and he didn't rise from the dead, I'm a liar. I'm a deceiver. And you shouldn't listen to me. 
Again, you should tell me to shut my Bible, shut my mouth, go away, because I don't want to be deceived by your false religion. Let's be real about it, okay? Let's not be polite or politically correct. Let's be real. If Jesus didn't rise from the dead, I'm a liar. Amen? But I'm not a liar. I'm preaching about something that's true. He rose from the dead. So I pray to him every day of my life. I commune with him every day of my life. I spend time in his presence every day of my life. I, I, I walk down the street. I'm praying. I'm rejoicing. I'm praising God. Yeah. See, you don't see me while I'm in this building on my own during the week. And I know there's nobody else in this room. And I know nobody else out there can hear me. Yeah. And my wife's at home and my kids are at school or whatever they are. Yeah. I'm on my own in the building, doing whatever I'm doing in the building, you know, studying, you know, reading and, and working on the computer in the office or doing some practical work around the building. You should hear the praises that go up from this room. You should hear the prayers that go up from this room for you dear people. Amen. I don't just stand on this stage. I kneel on this stage. I lie down on this stage. Why? Because I'm mad? No, because I'm talking to someone that's real and he hears my prayer and he'll hear your prayer because he's real and he'll come into your life and he'll make the difference and he will raise you up. Amen. Can I hear an amen? Hallelujah. Verse 17 now. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, you're still in your sins. Hallelujah. If Christ isn't raised, your faith is futile. It's powerless. It cannot change you. Believing in your head that God raised Jesus from the dead won't change you. Believing facts won't change you. Having a belief system won't change you. What changes you is a living Christ. Amen? You can't overcome sin. You can't overcome your problems. You cannot change your situations in your own strength. Some of them you may be able to, but there's a lot of stuff in life you can't. Okay? And the one thing that you cannot change is within you. It's your own sinful nature. It's the own problems that you cause yourself because of what you are and because of what we are. Amen? That's why you need the living power of God to break the bondage. You need the power of God to break alcoholism, don't you? Yes? You need, you need the power of God to break that bad habit of smoking like I used to have when I was, you know, donkey's years ago. You need the power of God to transform your family life, don't you? You need the power of God to change you, amen? Hallelujah. Where were you? Where were you before you knew Christ? You know your own life. I don't know all of you. I don't know all of you well enough to know what your past has been, but you know. Where were you? What did characterize your life? What was going wrong in your life? What issues did you have in your life? How were things going wrong in your life? How were you feeling deep down in your spirit and your heart? What was your life like then? But what difference has Jesus made since he came into your life? Has he delivered you? Are you off the alcohol? Are you off that, the, 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 those prescription drugs? Are you off whatever it may be? Are you no longer watching the things that you used to watch? Are you no longer listening to the stuff that you used to listen to? Has Jesus transformed you? Of course he has. Is he real? Absolutely. Say an amen. amen. Come on, give him a hand clap. <laughs> you can't rejoice today, then we might as well close this church down, okay? Because this is the greatest day of the year. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Go to Romans chapter 1 and verse 4. Romans chapter 1 and verse 4. Romans chapter 1 and verse 4. It's before 1 Corinthians. Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Acts and Romans follow on. <laughs> Romans 1 verse 4. And it's talking about uh, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Who through the spirit of holiness was declared with power to be the Son of God by his resurrection from the dead. 
He was declared with power to be the Son of God by His resurrection from the dead. The resurrection, if you will, is God's seal of approval on the work that Jesus did on the cross. When Jesus was on the cross, He carried your sin. The Bible also says He carried our sicknesses. So I, 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 somebody put a comment in, 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 it was actually in the Evening Pastors Facebook group that we're in. And somebody said, you know, we preach Jesus that he, that he forgives sins and He delivers from sin and eternal hell and all of that and the forgiveness of sins. We preach that, but we don't preach that Jesus also carried our sicknesses, do we? Yeah? Big problem within evangelicalism over the years, yeah? The Bible says that when Jesus died, He carried your sin. He also carried every single one of your sicknesses. He also carried all of your griefs. He carried all of your sorrows. And He carried it all on the cross. And when He died, He took all of that stuff into the grave with Him. That's why it says He was buried in the ground. Your sin is in the ground. Your sicknesses are actually in the ground. Your griefs and your sorrows, they're all in the ground. Jesus took the whole jolly lot of what you are in your nature, in your life, and he took it away by dying on the cross with it and then burying it in the ground. So when he rose again from the dead, guess what? He left your sin in the ground. He left your sicknesses in the ground. He leaves your griefs and your sorrows in the ground. So you don't need to carry all of those things anymore. Yeah? The, the, the thing is that God placed his seal of approval on the finished, completed work of Jesus Christ on the cross by raising him from the dead. And when he raised him from the dead, he didn't bring any of those things back with him. Yeah? Can we make it clear? Can we go one step further? Can we go one extra inch up the ladder of our understanding and of our revelation? All of those things have been left in the grave. Your own death has been left in the grave. Which is why the Bible teaches that because Jesus rose from the dead, you also one day will, raise from, will rise from the dead. Your death is never the end. When you die, you go straight into the presence of Christ. Your body gets buried, but your spirit goes to heaven immediately, and you are in the presence of Christ. Amen? But when Jesus comes back in the rapture, your body, if you have already died, is going to be raised from the dead. Amen? It's all buried so that the good news can come into your life. He's a living saviour, so he can come and he can deliver you from sin. He can deliver you from bondage. And by God, he can also heal that sick body of yours. And it's about time we started to believe that within Christian churches in this country. Amen. Because you can go around the world and you can find preachers in Africa and other places and they believe that Jesus is healed and they see the miracles of God happening. But in blessed old Britain, no, because nobody likes to believe that stuff or touch that stuff because it might get some people upset or it might be uncomfortable. Amen. It's about time we need to start pressing through into God to see the light transforming power of God in every single way. Amen. So he can put sin to death. He can break that bondage. He can provide everything that you need. If you seek first the kingdom of God, he will, he will meet all of those needs that you have. You will never lack. You will never go under because you, you're walking with somebody that's conquered all of that stuff. You know, his pockets are far richer than you think. He owns a cattle on a thousand hills. So why won't he give one to you? Why won't he provide for you? Of course he'll provide for you. Your life will go well if you follow Jesus Christ. Wholeheartedly. Surrendered. Your life cannot go in any other direction except a greatly positive one. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Hallelujah. It's great stuff. Amen. Declared with power to be the Son of God. So the power of God comes into your life. Amen. 
We won't read it because it's a long passage, but if you read the first chapter of the book of Ephesians, that's exactly what it says. It says in Ephesians that when God raised Jesus from the dead, or with the kind of power that God raised Jesus from the dead with, that kind of power comes into your life when you receive Jesus. He comes in with resurrection power. Amen. He doesn't come in with just ordinary human strength. He comes in with the resurrection power of God. So it's time for you to start flying. It's time for you to be strong instead of weak. It's time for you to rise up and stop mourning and grieving. It's time to just get into that praise of God which will fill your spirit with peace and with joy. Can I hear an amen? And don't misunderstand that, because I know a lot of people may mourn and grieve. But there's good news for those that are mourning. There's good news for those that are grieving. He can bind up, he can comfort, he can strengthen. Amen? Can I hear an amen? amen? That's the kingdom of God. And that's the kingdom that God has called every single one of us into. Amen? You should be rejoicing, because you have got good news to tell your neighbor. You've got good news to tell your friends and your family members. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.